Episode 6 of Blue Planet is called Coral Seas, and this is all about the coral reefs. So this episode opens up with coral. We spend quite a bit of time at the start of the episode actually talking about coral, and I'll say that for this episode, I can't think of another episode which goes into as much depth about the actual coral as this one does. I don't think there's any other series that deals with coral in this way, and I think it does a really good job of showing you that they are actually animals. I think most of the time you just take them for granted as a habitat. They are actually animals themselves. We basically talk a lot about their biology, their feeding, how they actually form communities, the actual structure of a coral. I've never seen that much about coral in any other series, and I think it was really cool to talk about that. And we talk a bit about the different communities that form around coral. There's so many different animals that come there. Whale sharks are probably the biggest ones that we see there. And I think footage of whale sharks was quite rare at the time, so I think it's quite good to talk about that. And we see that various animals actually eat coral. We see butterfly fish, crown of thorn starfish, and we see how crabs defend the coral from the starfish. That's quite cool. And parrotfish. Parrotfish are probably the most notable predators of coral. They just indiscriminately eat coral rock and they excrete the coral as sand, which actually forms the basis of a lot of islands. And we see other animals that live around the coral. We see these shrimp that live in sponges and they're eusocial, so they're basically like bees. And we see a polychaete worm infiltrate the sponge and we see how it's a pretty effective predator in its own right and how the shrimp are able to fend it off. That's quite cool. There's quite a lot of stuff in here I've never seen since that I found quite interesting. So that was quite cool. Stuff like that are what I really liked about this episode. We also see red-mouthed grouper, which are these large predatory fish that comb the reef, have their own little territories, and they have a little battle with a lionfish. Another thing you don't see very often, lionfish, you kinda, we all kind of know what lionfish are, we know what they look like, but we don't see them very often. One of the funnier sequences in the episode is the harlequin shrimp, which are basically, which are these two shrimp that have captured a starfish, and they're trying to bring it back to eat, but the starfish just keeps making it difficult for them. Every time they manage to pry one of its legs off the ground, another one just goes down, so they're constantly in this battle to try and get the starfish. I think they do eventually get it, but it's quite funny. This series doesn't have a lot of funny sequences, and I think that's one of them, so uh, I'm glad that was in this episode, because it's one of the more memorable sequences. We see competition between two different tang species. It's the blue tang and the convict tang. We see the blue tang, they've got their own little territory, and the convict tang come in and eat it all, and they've got to try and fend them away. That's a sequence we spend quite a bit of time with, and it's, it's alright. It's the sort of behaviour we don't see too often, fish repelling other large shoals of fish. Um, so that was quite cool. Again, it was a change from bait balls. This episode has no bait balls, thankfully. So all good stuff. And then we turn out the lights and we see night on the reef, which is quite ominous. We see this really weird thing called the basket star, which is the type of starfish, I guess. It's got almost like branches around it. You don't really see it as an actual starfish. It's just weird. And Night on the Reef is a really good sequence. It's one of the better parts of the episode. It's basically, does a really good job of showing you how ominous everything is. There's not a lot of fish going around. So it's a really effective comparison with the reef during the day, where it's very full of life, there's a lot, where there's a lot of colour, it's very lively. And at night, the colour is very sparse. You just see occasional colourful fish. And even the shots of the predators that come out, the octopus, the ray, they're all really ominous as well. The sharks, the white tip reef sharks are the best part of that whole sequence. We've seen white tip reef sharks before. We see them just going around, uh, getting in amongst the cracks and crevices of the reef and eating the fish. But it's a really good sequence. It's the sort of thing we didn't see very often at the time. We have seen it a lot since. But as this was one of the first sequences that dealt with that, it does a really good job of showing you how effective they are as predators on the reef. So that's really cool as well. Then we kind of move away from feeding. We talk a lot about food in the first half of the episode. Then we, more, then we talk about sex. So we see how animals mate. We see surgeon fish. They get together. They fertilize the eggs. And these other fish come out and eat what they left behind. It's fine. It's an alright sequence. The pipe fish I found more interesting. They're a bit like seahorses. And we see the male and female get together. It's nice. And they actually share the load with the eggs. We also see flamboyant cuttlefish. Cuttlefish are kind of notorious for having quite good mating displays. This is no exception here, it's quite cool. Uh, humpback whales, really interesting as well. When we think of coral reefs, we don't really think of humpback whales. But this is basically where they come to calf and also to breed. We see males basically just singing to try and intimidate each other. We don't go into as much detail as we do in things like life or the mating game. And then we talk about storms. When storms come, they can properly devastate the reef. We see all these lobsters escaping, they go to deeper water. That's quite interesting. But we see when a hurricane comes, it just absolutely destroys the reef. Which again, almost would leave it on a quite somber note. At the start of the episode, we talked about how coral reefs form from these tiny little polyps that are floating in the ocean. And we circle back to that by talking about how these little polyps will eventually recolonize this and it will become a reef again. So that's nice. Again, very optimistic way of ending the episode. And then we get the diaries. It's all about people filming sharks. I feel like I've seen a lot of this stuff since, so I didn't find it that engaging. Again, I haven't found the diaries in this series as engaging as I did in, say, Planet Earth or a lot of other subsequent series. But it's fine, again, it's it's an alright way of filling the time, I guess. So yeah, this episode is good. I think it's more interesting than anything else. Um, I think the highlights, I mean, again, I feel like this series doesn't really have a lot of highlights. 
I think everything with the coral was really interesting. I didn't know a lot about it, so I think that was really cool. It was probably the highlight for me. I also like the white tip reef sharks a lot. The stuff on the night in the reef was quite cool. So yeah, what did you think of this episode? What were your highlights? Let me know in the comments below. Next week, I'll be doing the Tidal Seas episode, which is the penultimate episode of the series. So look forward to that. Uh, as ever, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, or don't if you don't want it. It's fine. And I'll see you next week, and goodbye.